What's up guys? Today we're going to be tackling this really groovy render that I made in Blender. It loops seamlessly and it looks really cool and you're going to be learning some interesting things on the way. Uh, I've been playing around with Blender's compositor a lot lately and I'm going to show you a few techniques in there to uh, stylize the animation after the first steps of it. I'll also be showing you a few other techniques in order to create the actual animation. But uh, yeah, on with the tutorial. So we're going to start from an empty scene. So just hit A and X and then delete everything. And we're going to start from fresh. So hit Shift A, add a mesh, and we're going to add a UV sphere. Now come to Object. We're going to select Shade Smooth. Now just scale that object down a bit. So hit S and just bring it down to about there. Now we're going to hit Shift A, and we're going to add a curve, and we're going to add a circle. Now hit S and then 8, so you scale the circle up to 8. We're going to use modifiers to create an arraignment of balls all along this circle. So the way we do that is click on your sphere, come to the modifier section here, this little spanner, add a modifier, and we're going to add an array modifier. And as you see, if you pump the count up, it's going to duplicate all your spheres along an axis and we're going to add a new modifier and we're going to add a curve modifier and this is going to allow us to assign the array modifier to this uh, bezier curve that we've selected so add object and we'll select we'll link that to our bezier circle and now you see what's going on now as we pump the count up it's going to fill up the circle but i think the balls are a bit too close to each other so you can play around with this relative offset displacement and you can get a bit of space in between. I'm going to set it to 2.22 just so it looks a bit more like it's evenly distributed. Um, you might want to play around with it. If you just copy my settings, so I put it on count 40 and this relative offset on the x-axis, I put that at 2.2. Now we're just going to apply these modifiers, so hit apply and hit apply. Uh, make sure you have all your parameters set where you want before you do that because there's no going back once you've applied them. So we're going to drag the timeline up and on the end we're going to make this a 10 second render. So we're at 24 frames per second so I'm going to put that end to 240. Select your sphere, come to your transform settings, this little square thing here. And we're going to rotate this on the Z axis. So make sure you're on your first frame. Hit this little thing here to add a keyframe. Come to the end. We're going to put that to 241. And we're going to change the Z axis to 360. And we're going to apply a keyframe. Now, if you hit A, T, we're going to set the interpolation to linear so that there's no um, smoothing out of the curves in the animation. Right, now I'm going to add a camera. So hit Shift A, add a camera, just hit Alt R, just make sure you've reset the rotation. And we're going to hit zero, that toggles camera mode. Now hit G, then Z. That brings that allows you to bring your camera up on the Z axis. And we're just going to let it fill the frame. Now just save what you've got now. And we're going to jump into rendered mode and do some shading. So hit Z, then 8. And that takes you into rendered mode. Now there's no light in the scene, and that's okay. That's just because we deleted everything um, when we started. So we're actually going to be using emission shading to light up the scene. And we're going to use it on these balls. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to our world properties. I'm just going to make the world black, so bring that color down to black and just click on your sphere, come to your material settings here, add a new material and on your surface change that to an emission material and we're going to pump the strength up to 20 and we're going to make it a nice strong pink. Just come to your scene settings and your render properties 
Um, we're going to be using EV to do this, so make sure that's on EV. We're going to select Ambient Inclusion, Bloom, and Motion Blur. But on the Bloom, click on this drop down. We want to bring that intensity down because it's very strong. Now I'm going to turn my overlays off, so just click on this thing. The overlays are the uh, little orange highlights you get when you click on objects. Just uh, click on this to turn it off so we get a more accurate representation of how the render is going to look. Now come to the top corner here until your cursor turns into a sort of cross and we're going to drag the corner in so we get a new window. Now click on this editor type. We're going to change that to shader editor and we're going to do some interesting things with the shading. Now this is a node based editor. It what you, basically what you see here is exactly what you see in this menu on the right. Um, you can just go into a bit more detail here and into a bit more depth of what you're doing. Uh, so for example if I change the color here you'll see it changes on the menu in the right. It's just two different ways of doing things. So we're going to add a new node and we're going to add a color ramp. So hit shift A, converter, color ramp, pop that there, plug the color into the color now what you're going to see is that's going to replace the uh, the pink color um, because now the color that's being generated is going to be generated from this. So you have two faders here and it allows you to blend in between two colors. So as I bring that black fader in, more black is obviously being emitted and vice versa with the white. So click on the, the white one on this little fader here. Click on the white area on the, below it and that allows you to change your color and we're going to put that back to that pink we had. Now we're going to bring the pink in so it's nice and bright and the reason why we add the color ramp is it allows us to have more control when we start adding textures in. So we're going to add a texture in now. So hit shift A, add a texture and we're going to add a musgrave texture. Pop that there, plug the fac into the fac. And now you'll see when you start playing with the black, it you get a sort of weird pattern disintegration sort of effect as you bring that in. But we're going to make it better, so we're going to add another color ramp. So hit Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp, pop that there, plug it into the vector, Shift A, add a texture, and we're going to add a noise texture. So pop that there, plug the color into the fact, and now you get a bit more control when you uh, when you balance the sliders. We're just going to play around with a few parameters now. So I'm going to bring the detail all the way down on my noise texture. I'm going to bring the scale down a bit as well. And I'm going to play around with the scale on the Musgrave. Just play around with these settings until you get an interesting movement when you play with the slider on the color ramp. So I'm going to bring the detail up a bit. I think that's good. If you want it exactly how I've done it, just copy my parameters here. Scale 1.2, detail 0, distortion 0, in this grave put scale 1.4, detail 4, dimension 3.2, and lacanarity 1.6, and you get this cool effect as you, uh, as you pull that fader in. We're going to duplicate this object, so hit shift D. And we're going to scale that in, so hit S, scale that in, say about there. And we're going to make this one a blue, so click on your sphere, come to your color ramp and change that to a nice light blue. But as you can see, it's changing both of them. Now we don't want that, so hit Control Z, just undo that. And on here, see where it says 2? Sorry, just click on that and that's going to unlink the materials. So now when we change this material, 
they're going to be seen as separate entities. So yeah, just pop that to a nice sort of light blue. Now if we just hit play, also you're going to see the spheres are rotating together. Now I just want the blue ones to rotate in the opposite direction. And I'm actually just going to rename these real quick. So this is going to be sphere pink. And this will be sphere blue. Now click on your sphere blue. And we're going to come to frame 241. And on the location settings, on the z-axis, just change that to minus 360. Double click that. And now they're going to spin in opposite directions. Now we're just going to do some interesting things with the texture. Now we're just going to animate the shading of this thing. So remember we were playing around with that fader. We're just going to animate that. So if you just click on your color ramp on your pink one. Now we're just going to bring this fader all the way in. So it's completely dark. So bring that in. Make sure you're in the first frame. Hit I on your keyboard. Now come to frame 241. And hit I again on your keyboard. And by the way, when you hit I on the keyboard, make sure your mouse is hovering over the position. So yeah, I. And now come to frame 121 and bring that fader all the way up. And we're going to hit I again on the keyboard. Now, if you hit play, you're going to see you get this cool sort of. And we're going to do the same for the blue sphere. So yeah, bring that in. Eye on your keyboard. Just repeat the process, but for the blue one. Now just make sure you're in the middle frame. I'm just going to go to the color management. And I'm going to make that. And I'm going to change the look to very high contrast. Okay, now we don't need the shader editor. We're done with all the shading. So come to the same corner that you pull this window out from. When it turns into that cross on the top corner, click on it and drag it back in. Now that removes that window. Um, we're just going to quickly in start instancing these spheres. So if you click on your overlays, click show overlays just so we can see what's going on. We're going to select these two things. Now we're going to hit M on the keyboard and we're going to hit add a new collection. And we'll call this spheres. And we're just going to instance these objects. Uh, the, way, the reason why we instant these rather than just duplicating them is just to save a bit of uh, pressure on our computer. So if you hit Shift A, add a new collection instance, and just add your spheres that you just created. This is going to make a copy of the object without actual mesh data. And we're just going to scale that up a bit. So hit S. And just bring that about here. Hit Shift D, S, and scale that up, say about there, just so it fills up the whole view. Shift A, Collection Instance, Spheres, S, and we'll bring that in a bit to about there. Shift D, S, same again, bring that in to about here. And hold shift if you want more precise scaling. And then we'll hit shift R to repeat the process. And we'll hit shift R again. Turn the overlays off, hit play. And look at that, that's looking cool. Now, I'm just gonna do a quick sort of zooming effect with the camera. Click on your camera. Come to your middle frame just so you can see what's going on. We're going to go to camera settings and on the focal length, we're going to bring it in a bit. We'll say about 18. And I'm just going to make a few more duplicates of this. So Shift D, S, do the same again, just bring it out. Shift D, S, just bring another one out. So come to the first frame on your camera. We're going to hit I on the keyboard on frame 241 and we're going to set that to about, about 200 and hit a keyframe there and we're just going to drag this first frame in a bit. 
And it's going to look really interesting because of the way the camera sort of warps the uh, perception a bit. Um, so rather than having the camera go along an axis through the tunnel, through a tunnel, um, you're sort of zooming through it, and it sort of just gives just sort of weird abstract sort of um, warpness to it. I don't know how to explain it, but I think it looks cool. And we're kind of cheating with the loop as well because we're having it fade to black on the start frame and the end frame. So that's sort of a cheat way of making it loop. Right, now just save what you got. We're going to start compositing this to add some final touches. So come to render, just hit render image, don't render the animation. Uh, just make sure you're somewhere in the middle so we can see what's going on because the first few frames are just black. Come to frame one, two, one, hit render. Render image, there you go, you've got a nice little image to work with. Now, hit Z6, just come out of render mode. We're going to come to our compositor. So up here in compositing, click on that. Select use nodes, and this is similar to the material editor we were using, so it's node based, um, but this is for adding final touches to your renders. So over here we have our rendered image. That's the thing we just rendered. Uh, over here we have the compositor's output. So you've got the image plugged into the output, great. So when you render that, it's just gonna render what we have. Um, now we're gonna add some sort of sparkle to this. So if you hit Shift A, add a new node, and we're just gonna add a viewer node just so we can see what's going on. So select viewer, pop that here, so you've got your, this is one output nodes, that's the render output. This is your viewer output node, so this lets you see what it's gonna render as. So on your image, plug that into the viewer node, and there you go, you can see your render, and you can just move it around. Now we're gonna hit Shift A, add a filter, and this is what we're gonna to use to give it that sparkle, add a glare node. Now plug that, just pop that there in the middle, and we're gonna change this thing here from streaks to ghosts. And we're gonna change the iterations to five. And the color mod, we're gonna pump that up to about there. Leave the mix as it is. And on the threshold, I'm gonna put it on 0.3, I think. And on this, change that to high, so you get a high quality image. And you can play around more with your color mod if you want. I think about 0.7 looks good. Great stuff. Now, we're gonna render the animation. Uh, so first thing you need to do is make sure that glare node is also plugged into the composite output node. If you don't plug that in to the composite nodes, you're not gonna render it out with the glare nodes. It's just gonna render as it was before you even composited. So just make sure that's plugged in. And we're gonna come to our render settings now here. So output property. Change this output to somewhere you can find it. File format, change that to FFmpeg video. Encoding, change the container to MP4. Leave it as H.264. Output quality, you want that as perceptually lossless. Now all you gotta do is hit render and render animation. Now it might take a bit longer than normal because uh, you add in the compositor as well. Um, but yeah, once that's done, you'll have a lovely render. Right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, yeah, so as I said before, I've been playing around with the compositor a bit. Um, it's been something I've been meaning to learn for a while now, and I thought uh, this was the first thing that I made using it that I thought actually looked really good. So I thought I'd share it with you guys. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, if you do feel like you gained value from this, please hit the like and subscribe. And don't forget to tag me in your renders because I'd love to see what you're doing with the tutorials I'm putting out. Uh, you can tag me at Nemotion and I'll also be leaving a project file for this if you want to just have a play around with that. And you can find all my work and stuff at my website. That's nemotion.co.uk.